Good morning, Evangel. I'm Pastor Ben. I'm the youth pastor here. And I'm going to be going over some of the stuff that we're reading in the New Testament in a Year Bible Plan. So I'm going to be covering specifically Acts 20 through 22, giving a brief summary, talking about what's going on here, and just giving some context to what we're going to be reading. First, a little backstory. Acts is written by the Apostle Luke uh, between 70 AD and 90 AD, presumably. So that's around 70 to 90 years after Christ was born. Starting in Acts 20, we see that Paul travels through Macedonia and Greece, providing encouragement to those regions. He spends time in Troas, where he preaches and performs the miraculous healing of Eutychus, a man that, a young man that fell asleep while he was listening to Paul preach and fell and died. But Paul says, you are not dead. His life is still in him. So after that, he, uh, he heals the man that fell from the window. Paul then proceeds to Milius. There he calls for the elders of the Ephesian church, and he delivers an emotional farewell speech. He talks about the teachings of God, how faithful that God has been to him, and he is exhorting um, the teachings to remain faithful of Jesus and warning them of future hardships that will come. Paul could see that his ministry is now going into the next chapter of his life. So in this time, he was spending time talking to the Ephesian church, um, but now he's moving into a time where he's going into prison, right? He, he's aware of this because it's revealed in verse 22. It says that he would be bound in spirit. This is alluding to his fate that the spirit warned him about through bond and hardships awaiting in Jerusalem. So this is right after this, he is going to Jerusalem is where we then move to Acts 2, right? Paul continues his journey and arrives in Jerusalem. There, he is warmly received by believers. Now remember that Paul is anticipating hardship, right? But he's warmly received. So however, some Jewish Christians do express concerns about his teaching. So in that time, he is disregarding Jewish customs, right? In an attempt to appease them, Paul agrees to undergo a Jewish purification ritual at the temple. Nevertheless, he is recognized from a group of Jews from Asia who falsely accuse him of defying their holy place. This leads to a riot, and Paul is arrested by Roman authorities to prevent further violence. This is where we see Paul entering this next chapter of his ministry, right? So his ministry then has been going to churches, writing letters, but now he is in a place where he is in jail, right? Arrested, because at this time, this is where Jewish tradition, this is not going with Jewish tradition anymore. This is going into a place where it is illegal for what he is teaching because they are saying he's defiling the temple. He is defiling the holy place. He is defying all the things that were set before him, right? This is what we go and we see and that is known, right, at the time. And he is now being the radical uh, person pushing against what we see and know at the time, pushing boundaries. So that's what happens in Acts 21. In Acts 22... We move and let's see, while Paul is under arrest, he requests to address the crowd. The commander grants him permission, and in his defense, Paul shares his conversion story. And this conversion story is the one that he was knocked off because of a divine appearance of God. This is a story that we know is a powerful testimony, right? Because the one that was going and persecuting Christians, was going and killing Christians, is now all of a sudden serving the same God that he was fighting against. So we see in that time the transition for Paul, but he is then able to share his testimony in front of all these people, right? We see that Paul, even in his chains and his bondage, is ministering to those around him, the guards that are around him. Paul is chained to another guard. If we know Paul, we know that this man was probably ministering to him constantly, right? We know that he's singing these hymns and these songs. And uh, we see that as Paul is doing this, that he, through his story, right, that he goes from a zealot that is going and persecuting Christians to now being a devout follower of Christ. And this crowd, they listen intently and attentively. But as Paul mentions his mission to the Gentiles, their anger erupts, right? The commander orders Paul to be taken into the barracks for questioning. But Paul asserts his Roman citizenship, which surprises the commander, and he prevents him from proceeding with further punishment. So in a time today 
where we live in, an, in a generation and a culture where it is not often seen as our Christian faith is it's not normal. It is not necessarily agreed with. A lot of the time we face a lot of this where we might hear persecution from other people. It, our call as a Christian and our walk with a Christian as a Christian is not defined by those around us. But a lot of the time we get flag. We get things from other people that we get judgment or it's not nature or we are hateful or whatever. But instead, we are living our life for Christ, right? We might face persecution like Paul did. We might. But we see that Paul stands firm and remains in his walk with Christ. In these chapters, we see a highlight of Paul's unwavering commitment to spreading the gospel and his willingness to endure persecution and hardship for the sake of Christ, no matter the cost. That's inspiring to me. I see this, this story and I think to myself, man, why am I not like Paul? It's not easy to be like Paul, but I need to be out in my place. And now my workplace might be a church where I deal with people that most of the time are believers, right? But wherever we're at in our life, we need to be ready to, no matter what the cost, stand up for our commitment to Christ, or stand up for our commitment to spread the gospel. Spreading the gospel is our call and our mission, right? That is the gospel, right? Seeing what Jesus did, seeing the life that he lived. And we see a great example of Paul's unwavering commitment to God. We see that even through Acts, that when he is imprisoned, he is still spreading the gospel there. So we're not a slave to our circumstances. We are not a slave to the situations that we're in. But instead, God might be using that situation to reach those around you. There have been times in my life where I felt trapped and I felt like, man, God, what are you doing? What is happening? Why am I here? But little did I know back then in hindsight that God was using that for his good. Little did I know, and if I changed my perspective, who knows what more God could have done through me if I allowed myself to be used. So in that, I hope and encourage you that as we read through these chapters of Acts, that we see some of the hardships that Paul went through, yet we see all that he did and that Christ worked through him and he allowed himself to be used by Christ. I hope that you aren't a zealot that's killing Christians and have that transformation, but instead I see that as a Christ follower, God can still use me wherever I'm at. I am a sinful human. We are all sinful as we are when sin entered the world. But God is still going to be working and using us. Instead, we are going to see as we go through these chapters that there's a demonstration of tension between Paul's ministry to the Gentiles and the adherence to Jewish customs and Jewish traditions. But instead, relate that to where you're at now. We are in a time where it is not popular necessarily to be a Christian. We're in a time where you're going to get flack. You are going to experience hardship for standing up for what you believe in. Does that mean that we're not going to stand up for what we believe in? Of course not. Of course we have to stand in our faith. Of course we have to be firm in our faith. For uh, those of you that don't know, we had just gone on a missions trip to New York City, a couple of youth and I. And one of the biggest things that we learned was practically sharing our faith. And one of the biggest things that I realized in my heart was that if I'm not ready to be used like Paul was to share my faith wherever I'm at, then I'm going to be prone to not do so. I'm going to be prone to not spread the gospel. But that's our call. We get so caught up in our own, our own schedules and our own lifestyles. And, you know, we oftentimes think, well, I don't have time to do that. But that's our call. The faith that we have is not meant to be shared for just us. I always tell our youth kids, you know, when we have our altar time, we have our great moment with God. Great, this is awesome. Bask in this. But also know that you're not done here. Now we must go. Now we must make disciples. Our call is not to just be a minister just in our home or just in our church, but it's to be in our workplaces, in our grocery stores, wherever we go, looking for opportunities to spread the gospel. Church, I thank you for taking this time to listen to me. I thank you that I just have the privilege to be able to speak here and just be at this church. It's a huge blessing for me. And uh, I hope that you're encouraged as you read this next week as 
We go through Acts 20 through, I think, up until 23. But I wanted to highlight Acts 20 through 22 to truly just give you a brief overview of what was happening and the themes that we see. So that's my encouragement to you. Be unashamed to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's Romans 8.28. Be unashamed to spread that gospel. Love you guys. Oh,